Hi folks, it's Dave here from the iReady podcast giving you my post-match reaction to that very disappointing and deeply frustrating 1-1 draw that we've just witnessed against Dundee United at Tannadice. Some very controversial things to talk about, mostly to do with our friend Bobby Madden, uh, the referee for the game today. I'll try and get through the game as quickly as possible because there is a lot to, to talk about. Unfortunately, both uh, Derek is... And myself are rather under the weather at the moment. Derek, unfortunately, has got COVID and I am getting over the effects of my booster. So not feeling too great. And that game today certainly didn't make me feel any better, unfortunately. But getting into the game, Rangers played virtually the same team uh, apart from one that we played against on Thursday when we got that incredible result against Borussia Dortmund where we won 4-2 away in Germany. Rangers lined up today with Alan McGregor in goals. A back four of James Tavernier, Calvin Bassey, Connor Goldson and Hillander who is back into the team he was in in place of Borna Barisic. The same three in midfield with Jack Lundstrom and Scott Arfield and then up front Alfredo Morelos, Ryan Kent and Joe Aribo. Disappointingly no Aaron Ramsey on the bench who's picked up a slight knock so I'm told it's apparently not serious but Slightly concerning, I think, anyway, but uh, hopefully it's just a one-off and he'll be back in the squad soon because it's guys like that that we really need to come and play and step up for us to get victories in these uh, tight fought games that we had. But we'll get into the game. The, the first sort of 20 minutes, half an hour for Rangers were really lacklustre. Uh, Dundee United were happy to put their five men behind the ball, their four men in midfield and you could see straight away that they were going for the long ball constantly. As soon as they were getting it, they were putting it up for their strikers to, to run onto. But the first major talking point, 10 minutes in, into the game, there's a clear hand ball, a cross put in from the left hand side by Rangers and the Dundee United defender, plenty of time to move his arm out the road, a extends his arm, the ball hits him as he's trying to pull it back in I don't take it any of this nonsense that there was nothing that he could have done about it, it was clear that the ball travelled some distance before it hit him in the arm, right in front of Bobby Madden, absolutely shocking referee in there, clear penalty all day long uh, I think even if you, you know that Andy Walker saying it's a penalty, you know it's a clear penalty to Rangers, but you know we didn't get, get that one but at the same time, apart from that, not really causing Dundee United any major problems at all. Plenty of possession, no shots in goal. And then unfortunately, 29th minute, Dundee United scored from the corner, which again was, was poor. Expecting a guy like Hellander, me and Derek champion the guy a lot. Pretty poor marking from Hellander, he let the guy out jump him, but... For me, the big talking point, again, nobody on the post, which is absolutely shocking. I don't know how many times over the last few years we've spoken about that. Nobody marking on the post. Just put one person there, that goal doesn't go in. Really, really disappointing. And from there, we knew that it was just going to be Dundee United with their backs against the wall. They were happy to pack their defence. But again, we, we started to play slightly better, putting some pressure on Dundee United. Still not getting any shots on target. But then again, absolutely abysmal refereeing by Bobby Madden there, giving Alfredo Morelos a yellow card for basically nothing. Morelos clearly... Got uh, struck in the face uh, by an upper arm of the defender there. Morelos gets up and squares up to the guy and Madden just comes over and books him. Absolutely shocking. Not a yellow card in any sense. That if anything, it should either be a yellow or a red card for the Dundee United defender. Absolutely disgusting. But the game went in at half time there. Again, Rangers well, a lot of the ball really not doing much. And then into the second half... Started to play with a bit more urgency, started to play the way that we're expecting us to play. Ryan Kent having most of, of the, the, the ball down, down the left-hand side, as in the first half, him and Bassey were getting cooked quite a lot of joy, but the final ball's in, into the box, really not that great. Scott Arfield, his position in the team that's worked so well recently wasn't very effective, just due to the way that Dundee United had lined up with the formation. Arfield wasn't getting a lot of the ball, wasn't getting involved, so he was taken off and Fashion Sakala came on and that was re really the change for me, I think, well, even because Sakala was very direct after that. 59th minute though, 
probably the most unbelievable decision, even more incredible than the handball in the first half. The ball played into the box, it falls perfectly for Sakala inside the six yard line. Sakala goes to stick his foot out and he's clearly shut, dragged right back, you know, about the width of him, right in front of the referee, not allowing him to get his foot on the end of the ball to prod the ball home. Referee says nothing, ball's allowed, you know, it's cleared out of the way, nothing happened, no penalty, absolutely flabbergasted by that, it fits as clear a penalty as you will ever see, everybody's seen the, the, the replays, quite incredible, Bobby Madden g- gives us nothing, absolutely shocking, but the last half hour, Rangers really piling on the pressure, constant chances for Rangers shots, raining down, Segrist pulls off some fantastic saves, a lot of balls getting cut into the box, we've got you know loads and loads of corners which will go over it at the end, but not you know the, the standard, the corners and crossing at the moment really wasn't great at all today and it let us down big time. Uh, we made another sub in the 73rd minute, uh, Diallo coming on for Helander, so you can see that Van Bronckhurst was really going for it, and then uh, on the 74th minute, Ryan Kent with a great run and a chance right in, f- in front of goal, causing a good goal mouth scramble, couldn't get it in, but then finally, as we thought things, it wasn't going to happen for us, we scored a fantastic goal, it was Joe Aribo that scored it, great play by Bassi down the left wing, he cuts the ball back just before the byline, and there was Aribo to absolutely thunder the ball high into to the net past Segrist to make it 1-1 one, one. and then again Rangers really go- going for it big time Fashion Sakala really close with a header that came off the post he was a judge to be offside and then Ahmad the good and the bad we'd saw him earlier you know laid off by James Tavernier he thought he was offside didn't even bother going for it he was c- clearly on that was a bit frustrating and then this time actually quite unlucky gets played through one and one with the keeper Morelos was in acres of space to tap the ball in, but Ahmad goes for it himself, hits the shot, hits the post, gets deflected wide, then a few seconds later, Ryan Jack has another fantastic shot, it's deflected wide, last gas defending there. It just wasn't to be, there was five minutes added on at the end of the game, but you know we, we couldn't score. It's a disappointing result for Rangers, but I, I've been following Rangers long enough to know that even... Games that seem lost that we manage to get something out of it, you know, quite a lot of the time come back and we say, you know, that was a decisive point that we got. Looking back at the game, was it a European hangover for that incredible result midweek? You know, quite possibly. I've seen it so many times before. Poor refereeing by Bobby Madden, 100% right. There should have been a red card for Charlie Mulgrew on an absolutely shocking challenge on Scott Arfield. Nothing given at all there. Absolutely terrible. Uh, the two clear stonewall penalties that we didn't get. Absolutely shocking. But again, the amount of chances we had. 74% possession, 10 corners, 29 efforts on goal, but only one goal. Is it lack of a box, you know, a poacher, a box striker? I said at the time, are we going to rue giving Jermaine Defoe, you know, letting him go at this stage? Because I tell you something, I would have put money on Defoe scoring today in the last 20 minutes with the amount of ch- chances that we had inside that box. Again, it's it's hard to, to take when you're looking back on this. It's certainly hard to take when you're not feeling well. But again, I am trying to stay as positive as possible. I thought the intensity that we put in the last half hour was exactly what we should have been doing for the whole game. And I think if we had have started like that, we would have won the game no problems. It's an incredible passage of play when we get that many amounts uh, amount of shots on goal and but we can only score one goal the amount of possession Dundee United set out to set up their defence and play for set pieces that's exactly what happened for them and we couldn't break them down should we have gone with a different type of formation than we played in Europe you know that done you know the, the the formation and the tactics in the game at Dortmund worked out perfectly for us sitting back trying to control the play and then play on the break unfortunately though when you're playing against a team who's hell bent on defending that type of tactic isn't going to work and you need to be a bit more direct so I, we're all experts here aren't we especially when when we get beat uh, just feel that maybe not playing our field or playing our field in a slightly different position would have maybe done us a lot better today. But it wasn't to be. Hindsight is a great thing, but uh, 
disappointing in the end. But we will go on. It is still a point. Celtic are playing Dundee today. No doubt they will get a, a cricket score against them today. I've got no doubt. Uh, which will put them three points ahead of us. And it's it's going to be uphill. It means that we're going to have to, you know, really start to get a grip at the moment because we're starting far too slowly in these games and we're playing right in, into their hands. So I thought we would have learnt our lessons by then, but unfortunately we haven't. So anyway, Derek and I will be back soon. Hopefully the both of us will be feeling much better, hoping to get a podcast out this week. Keep the faith, folks. We've been here before. European hangovers is what I'm put, putting it down to. Like I said, the euphoria of Thursday night will, will live with us for a while and I think possibly the players maybe thought they just had to turn up today and they would get a result and they found that that wasn't to be the case. So, Anyway, we'll be back soon, folks. You take care and goodbye.